Good evening, and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending January 11th, 2020. And my news is over on the side, so I'll be looking at that a lot tonight. First up in this week's anime announcements, an exciting one for fans of the Higurashi series. Seventh Expansion and Kanakawa announced on Monday that the Higurashi When They Cry visual novel and anime are getting a new anime project. A new website and Twitter account have opened for the project, because everything has to be on Twitter. And Katakawa also began streaming a promotional video in case you need any more help getting hyped. Uh, Ryukishi 07 and 7th Expansion are credited with the original work, which doesn't mean much. The series will be animated by Passion and produced by Infinite. Uh, 07th Expansion launched the original visual novel software in 2002, and they were released in English by Manga Gamer in 2009. The original TV anime aired in 2006 and 2007. The game has also inspired a number of video anime projects, live action films, and manga, and most recently even a stage play, which ran in July of last year. So yes, more Higurashi on the way. What could be better? The 14th compilation volume of Kuma Nano and O29's Kuma 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 Bear... Light Novels announced that a TV anime adaptation is in the works for that series. The story is another cute take on being transported into a video game world. Main character Yuna is obsessed with a VR MMO and prefers playing it to anything else in the real world, don't we all? A strange game update gifts her an overly powerful but overly embarrassing bear costume, and she is torn on whether to wear it, until she is suddenly transported into the game world, and it becomes the best weapon she has. The story began publication on the Shosetsuka ni Naro website in 2014, and gained print publication in May of 2015. A manga adaptation has also been running since 2014. Looks cute, and yes, that is technically Bear, 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 Bear is the name of that. Uh, Kodansha announced this week that Yoshitoki Oima's to Your Eternity manga is inspiring an anime adaptation which will air on the NHK Educational Network in October of this year. Described by Kodansha as an intimate, quote, intimate emotional drama and an epic story spanning time and space, end quote, the manga follows a boy wandering the Arctic regions of North America and a wolf he befriends as they depend on each other for survival in the harsh environment, at least in volume one. Oima launched the manga in 2016. It won Best Shonen Manga at last year's Kodansha Manga Awards and ranked on the American Young Adult Library Services Association's 2019 list of great graphic novels for teens. Oima's previous manga was, of course, the renowned A Silent Voice, in case you've heard of that. Crunchyroll publishes the manga digitally in English as a simultaneous publication with its Japanese release. So if you're interested in reading it before the anime airs, now is your chance. It is also available in print. Let's see here. Um, screenwriter Shozo Uehara sadly has passed away at age 82 due to liver cancer. Uehara wrote for many of Tsuburaya Productions' earliest works, including Ultra 7 and Kaita Kita Ultraman. He also wrote many entries in Toei's Super Sentai, Super Sentai Tokusatsu series, the 1978 Spider-Man Tokusatsu series, and Kamen Rider Black. He also contributed scripts for many classic anime series, including Captain Harlock. Uh, condolences to his family and loved ones, and to fans of his many works. Very prolific uh, creator there. The exhibition of art posters celebrating the upcoming Tokyo Olympic and... Um, Paralympic Games opened its doors to the public this week. Renowned artists from across disciplines have created, quote, artworks based on the theme of the Olympic or Paralympic Games in order to foster momentum in the build-up to the Games, end quote. Among these artists are manga creators Naoki Urasawa, creator of Monster, Pluto, 20th Century Boys, and others, and Hirohiko uh, Araki, creator of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Now, um, yes, uh, Urasawa created his original artwork, Now It's Your Turn, based on sports manga, commenting that the weekly serial comic was, quote, the perfect format for capturing the excitement of sporting events, concluding with the line, to be continued every weekly episode, has left readers on the edge of their seats, 
just like watching a real match, end quote. He, con <laughs> Excuse me. he concludes his explanation on the piece and its title by saying, quote, it is my attempt at representations that transcend sporting events, race, and gender. Everybody gets a turn. Now it's your turn, end quote. Um, a Rockies illustration titled The Sky Above the Great Wave Off the Coast of Kanagawa takes its compositional motif from the globally famous Katushika Hokusai print. The artist explains that he, quote, imagined the gods of sports descending on Japan from a sky filled with clouds resembling turbulent waves, end quote. Would we expect anything less from the creator of Jojo? The poster also hides a number of references to its acclaimed Jojo's manga, with accessories decorating the pictured athlete's hair, clothes, and prosthetic legs, resembling the stands of characters from the series. So, there you go. Let's see here. The Push Against Pirated Manga. Whoops, there we go. The Push Against Pirated Manga and anyone who could possibly be associated with it has another edition this week. Japanese publishing company Takashobo, along with an unnamed male manga creator, have filed a lawsuit with the Tokyo District Court against web security company Cloudflare. The lawsuit alleges that Cloudflare provided its services to websites despite knowing that they contained illegally pirated manga and is therefore complicit in copyright infringement. Takashobo and the manga creator both seek damages from the company, and Takashobo is also seeking the removal of all its manga data that is temporarily stored on Cloudflare's servers. This might not be as much of a news story as it is a question on what can actually make you complicit in a crime, but regardless, it's an interesting development in the continuing piracy saga. I mean, always something more going on there. Meanwhile, um, it was announced this week that Yostar, the creator of the Azure Lane smartphone game, is founding its own animation studio. Yostar CEO Heng Da Li will also serve as representative director of Yostar Pictures. Board members include Albacro LLC's Ryosuke Inagaki, who is production manager for Kiz Niver, an animation producer for When Supernatural Battles Become Commonplace, and animation supervisor Kengo Saito, chief animation director for SSS Gridman or 4S Gridman or however you're supposed to pronounce that. IP planning and production company Arch Inc. invested in Yostar Pictures and will also support the company through product and strategy planning and execution. Arch, which began in 2017, aims to, quote, become is a new arch for companies and creators in and outside Japan and be a bridge to connect them and their stories and characters to consumers around the world, end quote. Just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? All right. Uh... Tis the season for year-end awards, and this week brings announcements from a couple revolving around our favorite entertainment medium as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Voting has officially begun for Crunchyroll's 2019 Anime Awards. Now in its fourth year, the awards aim to, quote, commemorate the best of the best, end quote, of the year's anime offerings in a number of different categories, with the winners chosen by a combination of global fan votes and a committee of judges. The judges, which are meant to, quote, represent a cross-section of anime knowledge spanning a wide range of history and expertise, end quote, also put together the lists of nominees, which is kind of an interesting system. <laughs> this year's top nominees across categories are, can you guess, Demon Slayer, Kometsu no Yaiba, along with Carol and Tuesday and Vinland Saga, each with nine nominations overall. The Promised Neverland, Sarazan Mai, and Mob Psycho 102 are also close behind. Besides main categories like Anime of the Year and Best of Various Genres, fans can also vote for Best Girl and Boy, which I always think is annoying, Best Performance by a Voice Actor, English and Japanese, and more. Voting runs through the 17th of January, so basically a week from now, and the awards will be presented at a live show on February 15th. To vote and see all the nominees, check them out on Crunchyroll. Imagine that. There we go. Monthly anime magazine Animedia 
also holds a yearly fan-voted award contest, this one revolving specifically around the year's favorite characters. Winning characters are selected based on specific characteristics. For example, Demon Slayer's protagonist, uh, Ten uh, Tanjiro Kamado, won the awards for Bright and Courageous, along with being named the overall MVP. In fact, between seven different characters, Demon Slayer took home 11 different categories, including, of course, Cute for everyone's favorite demon little sister. Aww. Uh, Tanjiro's voice actor Natsuki Hanai commented on the wins, by the way, saying that the record-breaking number of wins indicates just how many charismatic characters Demon Slayer has. Which, you know, fair. Other characters to receive awards this year were, excuse me, Detective Conan's Conan Edogawa, winning for Clever, and Lucky Kiseki from the Idol series Aikatsu on Parade, who won for Newcomer. This week also brings several more exciting announcements in the world of manga and anime-related magazines. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> the perils of speaking at an anime convention. Um, first up, Shueisha's Weekly Young Jump magazine is celebrating its 40th anniversary with the launch of a manga competition. The magazine is establishing the contest alongside fellow manga publications Grand Jump and Ultra Jump. The total prize money 100 million yen 40 manga prize, which also rolls right off the tongue, is open to submission f submissions from pros and amateurs alike and will distribute prizes to winners across 40 different manga genres. Who knew there were so many different genres of manga? Well, Weekly Young Jump did, apparently. Up to 2.5 million yen will be given away in prizes for each category, with the grand prize winner in each category receiving 1 million yen, which is about US $9,000. The winning titles will also be serialized on the web manga site Tonari no Young Jump, or My Neighbor Young Jump, and in the app Yanjan. Submissions are open from now through May 31st, so to any aspiring manga artists out there, go check it out. Mm -hmm. Another mainstay magazine is celebrating a major milestone this week as well. Animage, the oldest ongoing anime magazine in Japan, has just published its 500th issue. The first issue of the magazine was published in May of 1978 and featured Space Battleship Yamato on the cover, as seen in the picture here. According to the, Jap the Japan Magazine Publisher Association, its current circulation as of July, September 2019 is 33,367 copies. The newly published February 2020 issue features a special look back on the 41-year history of the magazine and the anime series that it featured on its covers over the years. Congratulations to Animage, and here's to another 500 issues. But we're not quite done yet. From a long-running classic magazine to a brand new one, this week saw the publication of the first issue of Gundam Forward, a new magazine focusing on, you guessed it, all things Gundam-related. The new magazine is published by Hobby Japan and promises to cover all things related to the franchise, including anime, games, and, of course, model building. This first issue features a special look at the upcoming Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway's Flash films, along with an in-depth Gunpla uh, customization guide. That's pretty cool, you know, tweaking Gunpla. And a feature on Gundam-related mobile games. The magazine is on sale from Hobby Japan for a mere 900 yen. So Gundam fans, go find yourselves a shopping service and read away. That's all the news for this week. Thank you for watching. See you next week.